what's up YouTube, Jeremiah Hersey here and welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be talking about the star schema inside of Power BI and fact tables versus dimension tables and how this relationship plays a huge part in creating a data model and then as always we're going to look at a test question related to that. Let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, we have to have an understanding of the proper data model with inside of Power BI. And so we're gonna start here with our main table. This is known as a fact table. The fact table is gonna contain detailed information relating to things such as orders or sales, essentially whatever you are monitoring. So as we think about our fact table, it's going to be our largest table. This is essentially what information you're trying to monitor or understand relating to your business scenarios. So this could be the total number of orders or the total number of sales. Each business model is going to be a little bit different, but essentially this is going to be your main table known as a fact table. Additionally, you're going to have what's known as a dimension table. So the dimension tables are a unique list of values. And so some typical dimension tables that you would encounter are things such as a date table. So this is a unique list of dates associated to your model. You could also have things such as product. So these are a unique list of products that you offer. You could also have things such as services. So the services that your company offers. You can also have things related to geography. So this could be a geography table that contains a unique list of states or cities. And there are a lot of different dimension tables that you could have available. So the idea behind a dimension table is that it is unique. So it's a unique list of data, meaning that it only happens one time. So as we think about creating this data model, the ideal relationship between your dimension and your fact table is what's known as a one-to-many relationship. This is the ideal relationship inside of Power BI where the one side, so this would be the one side here, so this is going to be a unique list. So in my date table, so this date only occurs one time inside of our date table. And we'll put in yesterday's date as well. So these dates only happen one time. Same thing with the product. So this product table is going to be a unique list of products that you sell. So let's say a 12 ounce cup and a 16 ounce cup just to give you an idea or services the same idea is it's going to be a unique list of services that you offer so maybe this is a custom cup a basic cup and we could also maybe have utensils something like that. So you offer these services to create utensils for whatever the service may be. So the idea here is that each one of these dimension tables is a unique list of information. That's why it's the one side. It only happens one time. And so as we think about our fact table, the fact table is gonna contain a large amount of data typically and this is going to be a list of everything that you're going to be selling. So let's say these are our orders 
And so in the order, let's say that yesterday, 227.24 is the date. And we had a quantity of two. These were custom cups. And they were 12 ounce cups. So this fact table is going to contain all of the information relating to sales or orders or whatever you're monitoring inside of your business model. And so as we look at this relationship here, we have our one side, but I said that the ideal relationship is a one to many. And so the many side is represented by this star. Okay, so this star symbol represents the many side of the relationship inside of Power BI. So the ideal relationship is a one to many where our dimension tables are the one side, it's a unique list of data, and the many side, it could happen many times. And so let's look down here at our date. So we have yesterday's date, 227. We can see that it happens multiple times. We had multiple orders or multiple sales yesterday. But as it relates to our dimension table, it only occurs one time. So if I'm looking at 227, I'm going to use the dimension table to filter my fact table. So as I select 227, 24 from my dimension table, it's going to filter all of the results for 227. So the idea is that we're going to have our dimension tables a unique list of data and it's going to allow us to filter our fact table our main table and so as we look at our product so say we looked at 12 ounce cups what that would then do is it would filter only to this first record here where 12 ounce cups are identified. And so you're going to build these relationships based on a key. We talked about key columns when we talked about merging tables together. And so with this idea, we're going to essentially be able to filter down our data based on specific items. If I choose, let's say, custom cup, up here in services, then what that would do is then filter down to where we see custom cups. So it would be this first record and it would be this record down here at the bottom. So that's what a star schema is. It's setting up dimension tables on the one side and your fact table on the many side of the relationship. This allows for filtering with inside of your Power BI report. And so when you're thinking about a dimension table, it needs to be a unique list of data, no duplicates, in order to set up this model correctly. So let's go ahead and look at our test prep question. So it says you were building a Power BI report that uses data from Azure SQL database named ERP1. And you're going to import the following tables. So we have a products table that contains a product catalog. We have an orders table that's going to contain a high level of information about orders. And then we're also going to have an order line items table that contains product ID, quantity, and price details of an order. So the first thing that we want to identify is what we believe these tables to be. And so as we look at products, products is it's going to contain a product catalog unique list. So this is going to be our dimension table. So the products table is going to be a dimension. And then we're going to look at orders. Well, orders is going to contain information about the orders. So this is going to be a fact table. Now, the next one we have to look at is order line items. So this is going to contain the product ID, the quantity and price details of an order. Well, essentially, this is also fact table information, right? It contains information about the orders table. So this would also kind of be considered a fact table. 
So the question says we need to perform the following analysis, orders sold over time that include a measure for total order value and orders by attributes of the products sold. The solution must minimize update times when interacting with visuals. What should you do first? And this is the key to the question here. What should we do first? Whenever we're building a data model, whenever we're building a Power BI report, the very first thing that we do is we start inside the Power Query and we're gonna transform our data. So when it asks what should we do first, our first thought should be, okay, we're going to start inside of the Power Query. So let's see what answer choices we have that relate to that. So the first one says from the Power Query, we're going to merge order line items and the products query. So order line items and products query. Well, as we look at how we've identified, we identified products as the dimension table and orders as a fact table. So to build a proper data model, once the data is loaded into Power BI, we want to separate our dimension tables from our fact table. And so this would not be correct because we don't want to merge the two together. We want to be able to filter from our product table to our orders. B says create a calculated column that adds a list of product categories to orders by using a DAX function. So a DAX function, a data analysis expression function, this is done inside of Power BI. So as we're thinking about a DAX function, this is actually done in Power BI desktop, not inside the Power Query. So when we're trying to combine data or transform data, we wanna to try to do this inside the Power Query as much as possible because that's where you're gonna get the best compression and indexing from when you're loading in the Power Query to the Power BI desktop. And so ideally, we do not want to use a DAX function to do this. We want to try to accomplish the task inside the Power Query. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate option B. C says, calculate the count of orders per product using a DAX function. Once again, DAX is used inside of Power BI. It's a data analysis expression and we want to try to perform all of our transformations and combining of data with inside of the Power Query. So this is not ideal. While it could work, this is not ideal for what we want to do. And so as we look at D here, it says from the Power Query, merge the orders query with the order line item query. And so this is essentially going to take the two parts of our fact table and combine them into one query or one table so that we can still have our dimension table, our products table, and filter down our orders. So this is going to be our correct answer. D, we're going to merge the two pieces of fact table together inside of the Power Query, creating essentially one fact table that our dimension table can filter down to. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content, I'll see you in the next one.